internet. It's Daniel with Driving and Dragons. And today, we're going to talk about another quick adventure hook. This time, it's going to be the out of nowhere hook. Talk to you on the other side. So this is a classic. All right. This is one of the longest standing uh, plot hooks in all of tabletop role-playing game. It gets used all the time. It's used in adventure modules on a regular basis, mainly because it's a very effective call to action. I'm calling it the out-of-nowhere hook. Um, you can call it the shock and awe hook. Um, there's just a lot of things you can call it. You can call it a call to action hook. But what this is, is a, it's a hook that is caused by interrupting an otherwise seemingly normal scenario with a just massive call to action. Now, this can blend in with other hooks. I mean, it can, you know, the crisis hook can be used this way. Um, your, you know, in it hooks can be used this way. Any, any, you can use different kinds of hooks with this tactic. Um, but it, and it can take a lot of different flavors. But the core of the way this works is something happens that is unexpected, that is out of the ordinary, that is going to be, just doesn't seem, there's no lead up to it. It's a surprise. The best example I can think of is the book Dragons of Autumn Twilight. All right. This is the first book in the Dragonland series that was written way back in the 1980s. And for those who don't know, it was written by Margaret Weiss and Tracy Hickman. Tracy Hickman, same guy who wrote Ravenloft. It was written specifically as a companion to several modules that were written for AD&D. And that, that was the entire idea. It is a, as a matter of fact, most of the characters that are involved were built from Tracy Hickman and his wife, Laura, running a D&D game and letting different people at TSR build these characters and kind of flesh out the, you know, they fleshed them out, but they kind of built these characters off of a D&D game because it was all based around these modules. And in that book, spoiler alert for those who haven't read it, in the very, very beginning, they're all old friends that are meeting up at this inn, and they're all going to be there by themselves. They're, they're meeting their friends. And there's this barbarian couple that comes in to the, comes into the inn, and the woman sings. And something occurs that results in her using this staff that she has is very unassuming and it heals somebody um, I believe if I remember correctly it was a uh, cleric or a, you know, a false priest really who fell into a fire was burned and then had his hands healed now this is a huge deal because in Dragonlands you know, one of the big things that this party had done before they came back to meet together was they were searching for signs of the gods that everybody felt that abandoned them and they were looking for true healing magic, which had not been in the world for hundreds of years. So you can imagine everybody's shock when this barbarian woman heals somebody with magic because healing magic has not been in this world for hundreds of years. Big bright flash, now it's total chaos, and the party has a call to action. They... They basically need to save this barbarian woman because she and her companion are being attacked. And there's bad guys who are looking for, you know, the woman with with the staff that happened to be in the in the inn. There's the false priest who's there who is one to yell that they're a heretic and they're gonna burn them at the stake. And there's the party, obviously, and then there's other random people that are just patrons and it's all chaos you can do the exact same kind of thing with your game you start it off you can use the let's just use the cliche all in a tavern your old friends meeting together and something happens it can be an explosion it could be a though 
I would say explosion is not how I would use this hook, just so you know, it can be that way. But you want it to be something really more significant. And I, I'm not saying that a, a wall exploding is significant, but I'm saying that you want it to be something that has more meat on it so that it becomes a real hook and not just an incident for people to run away from. The wall explodes, like, oh man, we're gonna run out the back. It's like, well, well, wall blew up, you know, see what happened over there. Oh, it was a cyber psycho, shot a rocket launcher at the wall. Oh, yeah. We ain't screwing with him, we're just gonna beat it. You know, there ain't no money in this for us. That doesn't really work, and let, you know, especially if you have a couple of players who are of the ilk that they like to test your hooks. Um, it's kind of a little bit of a breach of the role-playing game social contract when people do that, but you, you got to give them a little bit of leeway. You've got to give them some meat on the bone because it's just as much a breach of the social contract to give your players what is essentially an empty hook with no bait on it and just say, here's the hook, you need to take it, as it is for the players to be overly obtuse about your adventure hooks. So just remember that. Game Masters, you have a responsibility in the social contract to give them something that has some meat on it so that they can enjoy the game. So it needs to be something special, something set up in the world. In the Dragonlands example, the hook is even take away that, the, that this party has known each other and that they were looking for healing magic to begin with and for signs of the old gods. This is a world where there has been no healing magic period for hundreds of years and bam this barbarian woman this beautiful barbarian woman heals somebody with magic that in and of itself by itself is like what this needs to be investigated same thing needs to happen if you use this hook you have a situation where your world have it be something that's way out of the ordinary and rare and everybody knows that have it set up in your primer when you first tell people what the world's like. We're talking character creation. This hook gets set at character creation because when you sit your players down, and we're talking before session zero, when you go to your players and you say, hey, we're going to play and here's what the campaign setting is like and here's what how different things interact in my world so you can go make your character. That is when this hook starts. Following the example, I'm going to sit down with you. All right, we're going to play Dungeons and Dragons. We're playing in the Age of Despair. And what has happened is, you know, nobody has seen any healing magic or any sign of the gods for over a hundred years. There was a great cataclysm. There's a bunch of fake prophets that, you know, worship the new gods and whatnot that have come up, and none of them have any healing magic because they're not really worshiping the true gods. And that's a common thing in this world. And that's, that's where you're going to be at. So here's how wizards work. Here's how fighters work. This is going to be a lower magic setting. And by the way, nobody can play a cleric. Or if anybody does want to play a cleric, they're going to start off as a, a fighter and they'll have to multi-class in later. But, you know, no, no healing magic, no, you know, no, no clerics right now. And people make their characters, and they remember that. That seed is stuck in their head. And then when in that first session, bam, the first thing they see is healing magic. They're like, hold on a second. He said there was no healing magic. It's already set in the back of their head. Same thing here. You do whatever the case may be for your adventure. Maybe it's as simple as we're going to play in a low magic world. And, and it, we're talking super low magic world. And, you know, plus one sword is hardest thing on the planet to find. And some guy casts a fireball or something early on. You know, these are the little, these little things are a great way for you to set a hook and bring your players into it. And it gives them a great call to action. And it can be started before you ever even sit down to write session one. So make it significant. Just make sure that it is something that ticks in the back of that player's brain, that it's the player's brain, not the character's brain. 
you don't want this to be a, well, you guys find this very strange because of blah, blah, blah in this world. Don't do that. That becomes railroading. Set the expectation before you ever get to the table. And then when something happens in the back of your player's head, you got one player who is like, hey, wait a second. Healing magic. That's not supposed to be here. Now your players are thinking and they want to explore. So that's what I've got on this one. That is a very classic hook. It is a great way to start an adventure. Just set those, you know, set the stage early and slip it on in there. And out of nowhere, the adventure's begun and the players are right there on top of it. Like, share, and subscribe. See me in the comment section below. Talk to you again soon.